It's a long story short, last time we were watching the old league, which was crazy. But we were missing some couple of items. Couple of things we were missing in that video. And good guy Axel was kind enough that he created a second video. Old league of legends was flawed, but more interesting, which is absolutely true. So let's see if he included the items that we're talking about and some more stuff. Old league season. Oh, let's talk about something from old league of legends that was really cool. Runes? and masteries now true but these are odd looking ruins that's not what i remember i have to clarify myself here and talk about a few things otherwise i'm going to get comments and rightfully so let me be absolutely clear the old system was not perfect and i'm not but it was fun one person chris strike was fun not going to defend how stupidly expensive old runes were for no good reason also they had layers yeah old runes had the tiers you unlock tier one at level 10 of your account level yeah, because your level, right now everyone is smurfing everyone's level of 2000, everyone's level of 500, everyone's level of 300, you know? Back then, level cap on your account was level 30. You reach level cap level 30, now you can play ranked games. But while you are leveling, at level 10, you are unlocking the first tier of runes, which means you're getting plus 1 AD, for example, yeah? You can buy these runes. Level 20, you're unlocking tier 2 of runes, which means you're unlocking even stronger runes, plus 2 AD. And level 3, Level 30, you're unlocking tier 3, which means plus 3 AD. And of course, the actual the price increases. Most players back in the day only had one or two complete pages and would be stuck using those same pages for a ton of different champions. Uh -huh. I remember a long time ago, there was a quote from I'm a cutie pie where he said something like, dude, I've been using the same rune page for like five years for ADCs and never changed it. Because let's be real, back in the day, all ADCs were simple. The gameplay was simple. Everything was simple. Which was definitely not optimal, but screw it, because a full page would cost- There it is, these are the quintessences you had, you could have unlocked only three of them. And that is tier three to my knowledge. So, 2.25 AD. And you can equip only three of them. And they cost 1025 influence points. Back then it was called AP, now we have blue essence. But the same just different form. Anywhere about the same as four to seven new champions, which is a trade-off that players often didn't make. There it is, hold on. Yep. That is tier 3. Look at the prices of a small rune, of a small rune. You can equip 27 of small runes and 3 quintessential runes. Quintessence. So, yeah. There were also lower tiered runes to help fill in slots when players couldn't afford the real ones. And in the mm. case that you were an absolute gamer and somehow had all the runes, guess what? You couldn't change them in Champion Select, forcing you to buy more rune pages. Yeah, everything, just like you are selecting rune pages right now. Well, what's the one thing you cannot change right now? No, everything is in champ select. Everything is changeable right now, yeah. To my knowledge, you can change everything in champ select. Back then, bro, the only thing you can change in champ select was uh, emotes. That's a good call, yeah, exactly. Think of it as emotes. You cannot change emotes in champ select. Same way you couldn't change runes, bro. You had to go into your profile, into your rune pages, and you are adjusting then. Only then are you queuing up, accepting finding the match, uh, accepting it, then you're going in, and already it's already a preset. Uh, you already have those runes ready, just like we have emojis right now. I know a lot of you out there probably still have a bunch of additional rune pages, but it's a blessing that you're not forced to buy more these days, because for me personally, I just change the same one every game. None of these things are good, and Riot has made great strides to the point that, objectively, all things considered, yes, the current runes are better. So, why am I making this video then? Because that shit is stale. This is stale, bro. What Riot did, they're taking all of the soul from the game. Strip the element of fun from the game. Because right now, they even with the most recent patch. No, not the most recent patch. A couple patches ago, they included the thing where you are getting recommended runes, which means they are taking the information from Korean plays, from Korean pro play score, uh, score scene. So you, you have the runes, you have your summoners, you have your build, everything is already said. Literally, it doesn't require your input to do anything. Everything is already done for you. So now think about this. Runes, check. Summoners, check. Build, check. The game is already giving you everything. Back in the day, bro, you're going ape you're mixing, bashing everything, you're doing some homemade experiments. Which sometimes were fun. Most of the time they were dog but bro, they were fun. Well, because better doesn't necessarily mean good, and certainly better does not mean perfect. True. Regardless of what year we're talking, I've never been a true fan of the rune system in this game, because it could be improved upon drastically. 
I don't think that runes should be removed at all, by the way, because it's really fun to use them. Popping Electrocute, huge first strike procs, stacking lethal tempo, grasp and shield bash combination auto attacks, kiting with fleet, it's super fun guys, but it's also kind of far from perfect. There were things that the old masteries did a little bit better that were lost in all the other improvements. The amount of selection you had, the amount of unnecessary bullshit which was fun, now what can you select? How many options do you have right now? Four in the main tree, yeah, let's pretend that's the red one, yeah, four in here. So we're going Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, you have four in here. Extra two more, you can take extra two more from the secondary. And that's it, then you're picking your defensives. Boring! The old masteries provided more of a chance to experiment, adjust based on a player's playstyle, and have better customization for the individual. Mm -hmm. But before we dive in, today's video has been sponsored by Repeat.gg. Repeat that? is a great opportunity to have more fun while gaming and also earn some cool rewards. Check this out. The website runs a series of tournaments to compete for prizes. Nice. Now I know what you're thinking. Okay, but what if I don't have any friends or can't coordinate some custom games? That's a valid don't question. Worry, neither do I. <laughs> Instead, the way that Repeat works is it runs these tournaments based on your league account, and you earn score and points simply by playing the game as you normally would. Uh -huh. Now again, I know what you might be thinking, you're about to say, okay, I've heard this before, so I have to download their software, don't I? Yep. The answer to that is no. What? Everything that Repeat does is directly through their website. Not only do you just simply link your game account, but it will also begin tracking your progress for you. It really is that simple. Right now, Repeat is running this very exciting $5,000 prize pool fall classic first place gets 500 bucks you guys should definitely join this tournament all i'm trying to do the math right now so we have 5000 first place 500 second place 350 third place 250 that's i'm adding everything up that's 1200 if i am if my math is whole no that's 1100 where is the rest 3900 where's the money lebowski bro where's the money this gets 500 bucks. You guys should definitely join this tournament. All you have to do is click this big blue button. You can't miss it. Click it right there. Join with my link in the description down below. I'm going to enter this tournament and you should too. Come compete against me. If you're more of a competitive person like me, then you can enter tournaments for tokens and cash and really try to prove yourself and compete. That sounds like fun to me, but even if that's not your jam, you can still enter as many free ones as you want. Uh -huh. There is absolutely no restriction to how many brackets you can enter. That's you nice. can then redeem tokens tokens for RP cards and gift cards and get this, maybe if you just want the money, no problem. You can link your PayPal in withdrawal to spend it on whatever. Like I said, repeat is an awesome opportunity and there's no reason not to enter. Even if you're just more casual, why not hop in there and see just how many points you can accrue against your friends. Thank you again to repeat for sponsoring this video and go to the link that's in the description down below, the one that you see on screen right now. Not bad. Actually, I want it to be known that I'm mostly making this video for discussion purposes because I like to talk about this stuff. I think it's really interesting and I hope you guys do too. I enjoy- Because at the end, the old league was interesting. Boy, talking about game design, but I don't want to mislead you into thinking that I'm saying League must do this or the game is dead. That's going to happen eventually reg- I mean, the game is dead, let's be real. In the current state, the game is dead. Regardless of what we do or what rune system we have, alright? So that's just out of our control. Alright, the old system. It's important to remember that it used to be split into two categories. Runes and Masteries. The runes were simple and not at all like perks. They were just stats, and to be honest, it wasn't terribly interesting. The only cool part of the system, I suppose, is that you could choose more things than we can now. Most of the time these days, you're going to just take attack speed, adaptive force, and whatever resistances you need. Yeah, that's it. That's your defensive scene here. That's all you need right now. Truth be told, most champions can take this and probably be fine. However, in the previous runes, you could take, for example, gold runes instead. Yeah, gold income, experience. Experience per minute. Bro, be like faster recall? Bro, I might be wrong about this one, but it had some wild, wacky stuff in there, you know? Instead of damage, you could pick lethality runes for a big mid game power spike, and you could even pick crit runes where sometimes players would be a little bit cheeky and swap one of their AD runes for a 1% crit chance. And one at crit, bro, it changed the world. This would end up being hilarious if you actually netted a kill from it, and I guess that's again in this, exactly this. Level one, by the way. Kill from it, and I Boom. get. Boom! Straight up, get one percent crit. Always invest in one percent. 
Yes, that's again interesting, sort of, but compared to what we have today, it's not that bad, since any stats you used to gain from the runes are just moved to mythic passives. You can get as much lethality as you used to if you build Prowler's Claw. If you used to run an ability cooldown setup by taking CDR in your blue runes, well, you can get that now by grabbing one of the several mythics that give haste. If you want gold, we have Treasure Hunter, we have Futures Market, and First Strike. I Hunter got nerfed, so that's sad. I believe it was a positive change that Riot combined runes and masteries all into one, because picking these stats wasn't interesting enough on its own to be a separate system. In today's main video topic, what I actually will be talking about is the system of masteries, which was the predecessor to runes reforged. Basically the talent system in every single MMO. Runes Reforged came out for Season 8, and while being a solid change, I believe years later they missed the mark on something they wanted to achieve. I mean, if they are targeting new audience, sure, they actually hit the mark, because the learning curve was already steep for League of Legends, let's be real in here, you know? Plus with the fact that we have 162 champions right now. Not only do you need to learn your champion, you need to understand the champions of your team, you need to understand the champions of enemy team to understand what the hell can possibly happen in this game, so you can have a little bit of knowledge, you know? Then there's a macro, then there's itemization, then there are runes. So, you know, if you add to all of that system, if you add uh, the old runes and masteries, which were great, by the way, once you learn them, they were great. But, bro, if you want to convince a new player, somebody who never played League of Legends, join this and play this game, bro, it's way too complicated. Let's be real. The major goal from Riot for Runes Reforged was to let the player build pages based on their playstyle. I remember some quotes at the time being along the lines of like, a player should be able to build six or seven different pages based on how they like to play the game. Uh -huh. A you do you sort of mentality. They wanted to sell this idea so much that before the system even hit the live servers, over a month in advance, they gave us a little tool where we could play around with the new system, build our own pages for fun, incentivizing the player to experiment, theorycraft, think about what pages might be cool and fun and good. Yeah, that was the very beginning. Street of Pride decided to listen to high elo players for some god knows what reason. Who said that, you know, at the end of the day, all we're doing is going to LP.GG and other Mobalytics websites, which are providing us the best runes ever in the specific matchup, you know? So there is literally, we're removing this entire freedom of choice. I'm not building what's fun because I'm a sweaty League of Legends solo queue player who wants to reach number rank one, you know? I want to use the, the most efficient strategy. The most efficient strategy comes from Korea plus scene, you know? So, which means I have absolutely no freedom of choice to play fun, or what's most efficient. So, I'm just importing the runes. So, you know, that's where they failed with that. By including that, automatically selecting the best runes right now for you. You're getting what? Three pages? Three different options right now. Good. I remember at the time watching Freak's rundown of this new system. I was genuinely excited for this update, thinking that League was going to be a whole new game, now with a proper RPG-style tech tree. And if you fast forward more than five years later, well, that's not what has happened. Nope. At all. That's not even a matter of personal opinion. You can- That's recommended, that's what I'm talking about. Where's the choice in that? All they did was importing the best rune sets from the pro play that's being spawned in Korea, and that's it, that's what they're giving you. If you do something else, bro, you're kind of griefing. That's it. You can criticize my take if you want, but objectively, Runes Reforged has completely failed in terms of being about player choice and playstyle, because even Riot thinks so. Yep. Do you know why this season Riot implemented a brand new default rune builder for your champion? I feel like- To remove the uh, additional applications from being used. That's it. Like a lot of players have misrepresented the main true reason. Everybody seems to say that it's because Greedy Riot wants to destroy third-party sites. Uh, yes. And, okay. Uh, you cannot argue with that. You cannot say Riot is not greedy, bro. Look at the cinematic. You might be asking, what cinematic? My point, exactly! What cinematic? Look, fine. That's part of it. Yes, without a doubt, Riot probably didn't like that sites like U.GG and OP.GG uh -huh. were taking away a good amount of traffic from their game. Yep. Obvious greedy corporate BS aside, do you know the more likely reason? I believe, anyway, it's because runes are absolutely required to be correct, more than ever before. Taking the wrong runes is not a minor mistake. It's not really a little oopsie, haha, my bad guys, sorry. It is 
What do you mean? I mean, technically, yes, but see, that's where we're going into the different categories. Do you want to have fun in the game or do you want to try hard and win the game? These are two different separate categories. He's blatantly trolling. Runes are so important now to a complete and total fault. It is a genuine problem to take bad ones. The fact- Yeah, now think about it, bro. Imagine I having a hard time remembering if you messed up with the old runes, with the old uh, masteries, with the old rune page. I mean, sure, it wouldn't be as efficient as your best rune page and mastery page, but it wouldn't be the end of the world, you know? Because right now, for example, you take Caitlyn ADC and you have Arcane Comet, you know? You're kind of screwed in there. The fact that the game gives you recommended rune setups is basically a direct admission from the developers saying there are correct choices for your champion, and anything outside of this most of the time is going to be incorrect. Mm -hmm. This is where we need to talk about this row of runes. No other group of runes in the entire game exemplifies the problem like this one. Conditioning, second wind, and bone plating. Well, it's quite simple, bro. Bone plating into assassins. If your matchup is an assassin, second win, bro. If you're getting, if you'll be dealing with a lot of poke, you'll be getting back of an HP. Prepare that with Doran Shield and you solid. Conditioning, if you know you can survive early game and in the mid game, you're becoming a slightly tankier, which will greatly scale into late game. Where's the freedom of choice in here? Each one of these runes are very good and can be used effectively, but for entirely different reasons that have nothing to do with playstyle and player choice. Yep. There's a very good coaching analysis video by Shock where he goes over a replay from the World Championship. It's a solid breakdown, and if you play mid lane, I really recommend you check it out. It As a mid laner main, yeah, let's see. In this match, World Champion winning mid laner Zekka is able to win this melee into range matchup that we saw a lot at the World Championship. Akali into Azir. What he ends up pointing out several times is a good learning point, stating that Zekka isn't afraid to trade help in CS with the Azir, and in fact, that's the correct play. Playing aggressive in this lane is the right call because he has the clear sustain advantage. Zekka, much like every other melee into range matchup that you will see at the highest level, takes the combo. There it is. That's literally the combo I just said. Dora and shield. And the thing, not conditioning, not bomb plating, second win, there we go, that's the one. Combo of door and shield in second win. Yep. There is essentially no good way to play the lane properly in a melee versus range matchup without taking second wind. If Akali goes conditioning or bone plating here, it wouldn't be because that's the quote unquote play style that Zekka likes. It would be as black and white as saying, you know what, that's a mistake, that is an error. And I feel like it's the same thing in a scaling matchup that's melee versus melee. A tank should take conditioning. In a matchup you need to survive in, you should take bone plating. Mm -hmm. Just like it's a poor decision to not go second wind into Teemo, it's a poor decision to not take bone plating into Renekton. The point of bringing this up is not to say we need to nerf second wind, nerf Akali, nerf Azir, or nerf bone plating. The runes are being used in the correct spot. Second wind is good in two range champions. Go figure, that's what it's supposed to do. So what's the problem here? Uh, the lack of choice, because that's the only option we have. That's it. The problem is that no part of this is what runes should be used for. Wouldn't it be better to address this problem on a sort of case-by-case -case basis and looking at a champion's stats, rather than tying in 1000 plus healing from second wind in the laning phase, or 700 plus damage block from bone plating, or the ability to push one more wave for a reset because you had to take biscuits, wouldn't it be better to look at the health regen and mana regen for certain champions? Why is Akali's ability to play this lane correctly balance around and predicated on making the correct choice? You are forced to go second wind. Mm -hmm. When even the developers seem to agree that there's only a couple viable setups per champion and we should be taking runes based on win rate in data rather than the champion's playstyle or the player's playstyle, why are these not just passives? That's exactly the narrative, bro. They've taken the freedom of choice. It doesn't exist, bro. That's all you do. You follow the pro scene that has the that's following the meta that is most efficient and that's it runes at the moment are so much less of a tech tree or a perk deck that you would see in a role-playing game than it is a simple barrier to entry problem runes are a complete and total knowledge check uh -huh. and that's why we have this rune builder that's why the websites were so useful because if you don't know what runes are good you look it up you would never try to theorycraft what randomly sounds good to you I don't really have this problem with keystones. Most champions have one, maybe two options. A few champions have three, and maybe a couple champions in the game can take four or five keystones. 
but I think it's fine to me that Mordekaiser or Darius can really only take Conqueror and nothing else makes any sense. Well, technically, yeah, this is where I would disagree. Both Mordekaiser, both Darius, yeah, if you want to climb, sure. Go Conqueror, go with the meta build, meta bruiser, tanky build, sure. Because Conqueror is bueno for you, but if you want to have fun, if you want to have, let's say, a bit of a one-shot build, uh, how about on both Darius and both Mordekaiser, Electrocute or Halo Blazer. Lethal Tempo on Mordekaiser attack speed and go brrr, easy fast Brazil. One shot Darius with Prolog's Claw, Halo Blazer, you know? Electrocute as well, Demon the Dark Harvest, I'm sure, an angle, there could be an angle, but you know. You can experiment, there are fun play styles to play around with the champion. But, effectively, well, let's be real, that's the spoiler here, that's the other side of the double edged sword, you know? It's not meta, it's not efficient, it doesn't have the stats, well maybe it does have stats. And the stats are not good. So maybe if you're going Electric Darius or Halo Blade Darius, your wound rate is going to be 40% on that specific build. But it's fun, bro. There are bigger fish to fry in this game and more problems than the fact that Grasp Darius isn't super viable or whatever. However, because there are so few minor runes, only 5 in total from the 3 that you can pick from your main tree and 2 from the secondary, and they're all so different and all so impactful on their own, it makes it so choices here are incredibly limited. This is the problem, because Ride said the entire goal of Runes Reforged was to make it so players could choose based on their preferences. The old masteries had a lot more choices, and in terms of power level, they were all tuned down massively. The power creep of the game really shows its ugly face when it's referring to old runes and masteries. There was absolutely nothing that would give you thousands of healing, thousands of damage, and instead, precisely because they were a fraction of the power level, it meant that you weren't objectively making incorrect choices. The yeah, straight up, you couldn't fuck up with that. Yeah, that is exactly what I was thinking about. That's what exactly the point I was trying to make when I was talking about Caitlyn going with uh, Summon Aerie right now, or Arcane Combat. That's it, you're screwed. But back then, mm -mm, uh, it wouldn't be so much of a punishment to go with the wrong runes and masteries. There was nothing like the situation we laid out where it's like, if you don't take second wind here, you're doing this wrong. Masteries ended up going through two major cycles. The problem is that if you put more choices, it could create things that is more broken. Uh, but we had more choices. Explanation is in here, the solution is here, just nerf it to the ground, what it wouldn't be the major impact into the game. That's it. For seasons 2016 and 2017, they introduced the Keystone Masteries. This is when things like Thunderlords and Fervor of Battle were first introduced. Mm -hmm. However, before 2016, Masteries were still in the game, just without these major Keystones. Let's start with the 2017 Masteries. The Cunning Tree was the perfect example of giving the player more choices. That was three levels, I remember correctly, that was the beginning of the Electrocute, the Thunderlord. Or maybe it was stacking, bro. Don? I remember there was Electrocute, we had Electrocute. In this row, there were three options. One that was called Bandit, that very often supports would take because it gave you one gold for every CS that you didn't get, but also gave you a little bit of gold for damaging your opponent as well. And that exactly what we have in the support items, but only if you are a ranged support, because melee support, well, you know, best of luck being a melee support in the current meta, but you know, it is what it is. That of course makes perfect sense for supports, but just for fun, sometimes I would take this and mess around with this in solo lanes. It wasn't a ton of gold, and it was definitely not overpowered, but it was just enough to make you consider taking this over the other two options in the same row, which were Greenfather's Gift and Dangerous Game. Dangerous Game was a mix of Triumph and Presence of Mind, but scaled down quite a bit, and Greenfather's Gift gave you a small empowered auto when in a bush, pretty similar to Ivern. Let's look at another row of three choices mm -hmm. in this tree. Runic Affinity, which made jungle buffs and baron buff last 15% longer. I like straight up, that's the thing you do take as a jungler. Also, I remember the other one was something with the potions that they last 15% longer. Secret Stash, which was the predecessor to Biscuits, and Assassin, which gave you 2% more damage when no allies were nearby. You can see how none of these are overwhelmingly strong, but it's just enough to make someone consider it based on how they like to play. A Jax player would definitely like to have biscuits for the laning phase and help them scale, mm -hmm. but maybe that 2% damage is alluring for all the split pushing they'll do later on. A Rise player would also like to go biscuits, makes perfect sense for him, but maybe, just maybe, if you ask your jungler nicely, if you can get 2, 3, maybe 4 blue buffs during one of these longer games, Man, that would be really nice to have runic affinity then, wouldn't it? Back in the day, minute 7, as a jungler, you're giving your blow away to the mid lane, that's it. Minute 7, blow goes to middle, that's it. First one is yours for the most part, but 
No, second blue buff, that's it, forget about it. And that's the point of what this system did well. Much more often I would see high level players messing around with this and trying some new masteries, getting some new fresh ideas out there. Let's go all the way back to 2013 and look at the defensive tree because there was some pretty cool stuff. Best year to play the game by the way, if you didn't play then I feel sad for you. Often here. This row had Defender, where some minor resistances were given to you if teammates were nearby. This would be pretty cool to take if you're more of a team fighter or a player who likes to group. Legendary Armor increased your resistances based on percentages. Good if you're going to build a full tank this game. And uh -huh. Good Hands would reduce the time of death. Very good if you're Baus. <laughs> True that. <laughs> or maybe you're a Yasuo main also. Also applies to Yasuo mains. And finally, in this row, there was Reinforced Armor, which reduced crit damage. This mastery, you might say, is just like the current issue that I laid out, where there would clearly be a situation when you would want to take this. If the enemy has a Yasuo or a Trindamir and some traditional ADC, you should definitely take this rune, and that would be the correct choice. This one is more along the lines of being situationally always correct, so I think it's less interesting than the other options here. But remember, this is just one of the many different choices and wouldn't be taking up a huge 1 out of 5 slots for the minor runes like it would now. I think where Riot truly messed up with the new runes is that too many of them are far similar to reinforced armor where it's so obviously correct sometimes, and instead they should have done things more like good hands. Improved recall was pretty cool, it would reduce the time of your recalling, and I love this idea and wish we still had it in the game. In the same row, you could choose between meditation, which gave some mana regen, good for- The mid lane meditation was goated, you were trolling if you didn't take this into middle. Champions who like to stay in lane, or you could go for wanderer, which gave the movement speed out of combat, much better for a roaming playstyle. And you could see how the same player, playing the same champion, could maybe mix this up if they wanted to play a little differently. Again, while it's very true that meditation seems normalized for Rise, you should probably always take it, right? Well, what if you like to roam? What if you like to move around the map and make things happen? You wouldn't miss out on so much mana regen that the entire lane is no longer playable, and you wouldn't necessarily miss out on so much out of combat movement speed that you can never roam. The Wealth Mastery would increase your starting gold, and based on how many points you put into it, it could give you 25 or 50. The depth of the old system was very interesting because you decided how much you wanted to tech into each mastery, rather than being so binary, either off or on. Imagine right now starting the game with extra 50 gold on the spot. Awareness would increase experience, which is pretty cool for casted in play. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one I was talking about. Experience, bro. You're getting experience. Players who like to scale, but clearly you would be giving up some early power to take this. And finally, there were masteries that were specifically for junglers, something that we don't see at all today. Bladed Armor, for example, was a defensive mastery that gave a mini thornmail effect applying to monsters whenever they would hit you. The only rune that has anything to do with jungle at the moment, I guess would be the smite cooldown from Cosmic Insight, but I would hardly call that a jungle-focused rune. I hope that you can now see where the old system felt much more like an R- Hardly call it a jungle-focused rune. I don't know, given the fact that most of the time Strip Smite is almost always in cooldown. Flash, yeah, you're saving your flash, because realistically 98% of the time you are taking a flash, unless you're Hecarim or Shaco or something in those lines, uh, who doesn't need flash. Uh, it's uh, you, your flash is not on cooldown for the most part, so you're not utilizing that rune. But Smite is always in cooldown for the most part. RPG, and being able to design a page around how you like to play the game. Nowadays, because runes are so powerful, it ended up having an adverse effect where anytime you go anything that's less than optimal, it's a big deal. By having more choices that gave a minor yet still noticeable effect, it means that you're more likely to want to experiment. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Please feel free to let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of both the current rune system and the old one. I loved the old minor masteries, but the current keystones are still pretty cool and I do enjoy them a lot. Heck, it's even fun to just go in the practice tool and see how big of a first strike proc you can get. Because, why not? I don't know, it's pretty exciting and fun to go for big combos. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe, it always helps me out. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, so long story short, that's the idea. I mean, current runes, yeah, they are simplified. They make life easier for new players. That's the gist of it. The barrier of entry is lowered due to new runes and especially with the recommended system.
also, on the other hand, what we have is the issue that if you take wrong runes, you're trolling, bro. They're literally giving half of your gameplay away. Well, maybe slightly less than half gameplay, but you get the idea, bro. It's crucial that you take the correct runes if you want to win. Whilst back in the day, bro, everything was simplified, you know? Everything was nerfed, so it didn't have much of an impact. Your power came from the champion and items you were building, not from the runes. Because right now, bro, take an example of Lilia in the jungle who has 10 kills and over 30 stacks of their harvest. Bro, and compare that to enemy jungler who also has Lilia jungle, we're looking at a normal game. Also, same runes, but no stacks of their harvest. Like, bro, one is dealing the twice the amount of damage thanks to one rune. You know, that's the idea in here. Anyway, that's the video.